This is my shipping container. These are a bunch of solar panels and some portable power stations. And this is a portable air conditioning unit. And I'm gonna be putting it all together to turn this shipping container into an off-grid solar power charging station for all of my toys, my electric motorcycles, e-bikes, electric construction equipment, anything I wanna park in here, I can charge it off-grid. That's the idea, let's see if I can make it happen. Okay, so this thing is a Pecrin power station. The whole idea here is that this thing is basically a battery and an inverter all in one unit. So it's about 2000 watt hours. It's got six AC ports here under the dust covers. It's got another six USB ports. It's got 12 volts. It's got basically everything you need to charge all sorts of different devices. It weighs about 50 pounds. So it's nice that it comes with this trolley here so you can roll it around but I'm gonna mount it up on the wall in this container. Now by itself, 2000 watt hours doesn't seem like a ton, especially if you're charging big machines. So the nice thing about this system is that it's expandable up to 8,000 watt hours. This is the Pecrin EB3000. This thing adds another three kilowatt hours of capacity, it gets the system up to five kilowatt hours, but we can go even bigger. With this, we should be at 8,000 watt hours, and this is gonna give us a ton of capacity. Now, to keep all of these charged up, you need solar panels, and I'm gonna be using these 200 watt panels from Peak Run. You'll see that they kind of accordion out, and you've got four segments here. Each one of these 50 watts to add up to a 200 watt panel. This system is capable of 1,200 watts of input power, so I'm gonna need five more of these panels. Fortunately, I've got some right here. Now this isn't the cheapest way to do this. You could go with a custom setup and you'd save some money. You know, you can basically use your own battery bank, your own inverters, your own bare solar panels. But Pecrin heard that I was gonna be doing this solar container project and generously offered to send me their kit. So I'm excited to test this one out, and see how it works. It's definitely gonna save a lot of uh, effort trying to put together a custom kit when you can just use a you know, pre-made, ready-to-go retail system like this. Not the cheapest way to get it done, but saves a lot of headache. All right, I've been playing around a little bit. I scratched out a design I think is gonna work here. Basically, uh, a couple sub-assembly frames of two by four by eight foot pressure-treated wood that I'll be able to screw these solar panels down onto. Which means it's time for me to head out and get some supplies. Now I've planned on using pressure-treated 2x4 lumber for the frame, so I don't have to worry about it rotting away, as this will hopefully be a fairly long-term installation. And I just like working with wood because it's a fairly easy material to use. Next came some outdoor deck screws to hold the whole thing together. And my dad also needed some cement for a project of his, so why not throw it in there as well. Once I started laying out the design, my dad happened by and showed me where years of wisdom have its place. Why cut a pile of cross pieces when I can just run the 8 foot 2 bys lengthwise to support the entire length of the quad panels instead of shorter pieces to support each individual panel segment. It's funny because I spent so much time measuring and cutting and designing and screwing and in the end it just looks like I laid out two bed frames and slapped them together. But this should be perfectly sized to fit all six of these 200 watt panels. Next step is going to be somehow getting these up on top of the container. I know it doesn't look like much but these are freaking heavy so I think I'm gonna need the loader for this. And props to my dad here for putting up with me and doing all the heavy equipment operating off screen while I just sit pretty and yell stage cues. Hey dad, so it's backwards. It'll need to get turned around. At this point, it's basically where we want it. It might just need a very fine adjustment. Perfect. 
The last step for the frame was screwing the two big pieces together. I know what you're probably thinking, how is it going to stay up there? I had a plan for that. It's not pretty, but I cut four shorter pieces of 2x4 and I put a wide enough hole in the end of each one so that once I screwed them into the corner of the frames, I could lash the whole thing down to the container so it wouldn't lift up as one big sail during high winds. I still had another 50 pounds or so of panels to get on top, so I was not looking forward to doing that on the ladder, which is when my dad had another good work smart, not hard kind of idea. All right, so I just got the solar panels installed up top. Uh, it wasn't too bad, so now it's time to go figure out that wiring. I ran the wires underneath the panels, but they weren't long enough to go all the way around and through the vent hole and into the container, so I got some MC4 solar cable extensions on Amazon so I could make the length work. Then for each set of three cables, I used a 3 to 1 parallel cable that came in the Picron kit. The goal is to have these wires enter the container through the existing vent hole here, but I need somewhere for the wires to go, which is hopefully going to be into these massive batteries. The container is already full of my electric loaders, and that has sort of created something of an obstacle course in there, so I pulled those out a bit to make it easier to get around. We decided a hanging shelf in the back of the container makes the most sense so that it stays out of the way of the machines that we pull in and out of there, but because I didn't plan this out entirely from the start, that meant going back for another trip to the store to get more materials. Here's where things really started to get interesting. I was finally able to connect the panels to the batteries and the batteries to the other batteries and the inverter. Basically plugging in the solar panels starts charging those auxiliary batteries, which should then charge the main inverter battery. Theoretically, I can plug just about anything into the inverter, such as the chargers for my battery powered machines here. But what I really wanna get working is this air conditioning. It's just a simple unit I found on Amazon, but it should do the trick to lower the humidity and the temperature in this shipping container. Watts reach like 1040 watts and they start going down. So this should be 
8,000 watt hours, even if this thing ran continuously at DAC, that means it should run it for almost eight hours, which it's not going to be running for eight hours continuously. God damn. As much fun as it is to watch air cool, I decided to close the container up and see what would happen after a few hours. And boy, did that thing cool down like a meat locker. All right, so it's already tomorrow. Uh, yesterday I finished setting everything up and it was all working great. This morning I get up and there's a bit of a problem. So first I checked the solar panels and there's no charging going on. It was around like 7.38 in the morning. So I figured, all right, you know, it's early. The sun is really low behind the trees, lots of clouds. That explains it. I went back to check several hours later. It was like 10, 10.30 in the morning. Sun was already up, still no charging. And so that was strange. I unplugged the solar panels from the auxiliary batteries plugged them back in, and then immediately the battery started charging. So this definitely seems strange since it doesn't make sense that you'd need to unplug and replug the panels to start charging the system up. So I emailed Picron support and they very gently explained to me that I was not connecting these correctly. To do what I wanted in this setup, I should actually plug the panels straight into the front of the main unit and let that charge up directly, which then recharges the auxiliary batteries when it's full. Whoops, well, at least I figured it out. The more important thing to me though is that the AC is working and it's also working really well as a dehumidifier. It's less important to me that it's nice and cool in there. I mean, obviously I don't want the machines to be, you know, baking in the sun, so it is nice to bring the temperature down. But more importantly, it's preventing it from being a uh, humid type of environment where it's going to add to corrosion and that sort of thing. So I'm really glad that the humidifier aspect is working. It's dropping the humidity in there. It's just going to be a nicer environment for all of my electric machines to live in. Just kidding, the drone is fine. All right, so the build is basically finished. I'm gonna have my dad keep an eye on this system and let me know how it's going. It's in the shipping container here at his place. Uh, I've gotta to get to the airport to head back home. But before I do, it is time for the most exciting part of all of my videos, and that is the bike giveaway. This is part of a program I started called eBikes for Good, where at the end of every one of my videos, I give away a free e-bike by partnering with an awesome electric bike company. This week, I'm able to partner with Ride One Up, and we're gonna be giving away their Ride One Up Portola. This is a great high value folding electric bike. It is one of the most affordable in their lineup. They've got tons of great e-bikes, but I've been riding the Portola a lot lately, and this thing is a serious winner. It's got those great three inch tires that are super comfortable. It's got a 750 watt motor for good power off the line and to take you up hills. It can get up to 28 miles an hour, so it's nice and fast, or you can you know, lower that pedal assist and get just a nice easy ride to work out in. Of course, it's got a throttle too if you just want to throttle around like you're on a little motorbike. I really like the design because it is slickly made. It doesn't look like a low cost e-bike, even though it is. It's only $995, or you can spend an extra hundred bucks if you're getting the bigger battery. There are two battery options, so you can kind of decide whether you want higher value or you want to spend a little more to go a bit further. Even with the smaller battery one, you're probably going to get a good 20, 25 miles of range, even on throttle. Though, if you want to go even further, that bigger battery is definitely worth it. Like I said, I've tested this e-bike out a bunch and I love it myself, so I know that you guys are going to enjoy it too. In fact, I'm really excited for one of you specifically because this is the chance where I get to give it to one of you. So how is this going to work? Well, just like all of the e-bikes for good giveaways, the whole point here is to find someone who an e-bike could really help them in life. You know, give them a leg up, give them a way to get around, get back in shape, get exercise, visit family, anything that you need. If an e-bike can solve that problem, I want to hear about it. All you have to do is go to ebikeschool.com slash ebikesforgood. The URL is down here at the bottom of the screen. Let me know your story. Let me know, you know, are you down on your luck? Is it outside of your budget? What's going on? From all of those deserving entries, we're gonna do a random drawing, and one of you watching this video right now is going to win that Ride One Up Portola e-bike. It is an 
awesome ride and I know you're going to enjoy it. So if it sounds like something that could help you out but you just don't have $1,000 to make it happen for yourself, I hope to help you make it happen. ebikeschool.com slash ebikesforgood. Head on over, let me know how it can help you. The winner will be announced at the end of my next video, which means now I get to announce the winner of the e-bike from my last video. And the randomly selected deserving entrant is... Dennis M. So congratulations, I'm really glad that we're able to help you out and do this. This is just an awesome part of every one of my videos because I really think it's important to get e-bikes to the people that can be helped most by them. And so if you want that to be you next time and you want a chance to be riding around on that Ride One Up Portola, make sure you let me know. And now the real last but not least, it's time to announce the randomly selected commenter for my last video that'll win a free copy of one of my books. And the winner is... Tom from America. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself Electric Bike Guide, or my latest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you gotta do is put a comment down below this video. You can say anything you'd like, really, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. If you don't wanna wait that long to hopefully win a copy of one of my books for free, you can always find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you here next time.